Hey, Viola Rolls here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So let's go to the Watergate Hotel, and I apologize for the inputs and stuff being on the screen. I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, it's really bothering me. Oh, hello. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are? Ah, uh, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Stop saying, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, uh, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the, er, uh, facilities? If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah. Wait, no, hey. Why does it seem like every time I come here I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to sleep around a bit. Oh, I almost forgot. Yeah, you came back quick. Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and Maya's mother. Could it be a coincidence? I don't know, but let's examine the room. And of course we want to look at the drawer. There's a screwdriver sticking out of that half-open drawer. Now's my chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? A wiretap? Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? Wiretap added to the court record. Okay. There's definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this, I know it. Alright. I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean... <laughs> You know what I mean. Oh, bellboy, still there? Uh-oh, time to scram. I look forward to tingling with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. Yeah, let's do it. To be continued. Right now. Because we're not stopping. Safe? Uh, sure. If anyone knows how to make this number thing from clicking on the screen go away. That would be great. But anyway, let's continue. September 7th, 10 a.m. District Court Room Number 1. That was we're in courtroom number one today. The court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I had better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll come on me or he'll be on me. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, was at the scene of the crime. The prosecution has evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. The prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. You may call your first witness. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. Okay. The body was found by the window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. Really, Judge? Really? They're still calling it a statue. 
Floor plans added to the court record. Now, detective. Y yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene of the crime, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe. Please testify to the court about this hard evidence. Okay, let's do this. Maya Faye's arrest. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people already there. The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Faye at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. The very moment, you say. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine... What? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Wish. Smack. Apparently we, hit, we got hit with something. Hey, Maya just threw something at me. What's this? My sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness's testimony. She would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always looked up and said something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected Maya would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, no, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. Let's do it. Like they, Because you don't get penalized for... Um, pressing the wrong statement. You just get penalized if you present evidence to the wrong statement. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. Press. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb. You know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel right across from the crime scene. Hmm, okay. I pressed. Not sure it did much, though. Right, please continue. There were two people there already. Okay, I can't press that. The defendant, Miss... The defendant, Miss Maya Faye, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Okay, that's true. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Faye. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Faye at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. Hold on just one second. E yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly. What about this suspicious woman in Tink's claim was hard evidence? What? Miss May isn't suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. <laughs> Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um... Hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Yes. <sighs> Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor. There was something I should have told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Witness testimony. Hard evidence. After securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was written clearly in blood. Lab test results showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. Not possible. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. Hmm. Before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, Detective. Your Honor? Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence the first time? Uh, uh, I know, I'm real embarrassed. I forgot about it, Your Honor. 
sir. Try to be more careful. Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Gladly. Okay, after securing these. Okay, whatever. Um, on it, the word vial is written clearly in blood. Lab tests showed that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood. Yeah, okay. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. According to the autopsy report, death was instantaneous. So how was she able to write the killer's name? Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Mia Fey, wrote this note. That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying? Wha what This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. But backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately. But... No budding your way out of this one, detective. Order! Order! The defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have the time to write anything down. Oh, what? Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Uh, yesterday? What, when? Uh, the day of the murder, the day after the murder, I forget, it was... The day after the murder, right? Because... The day after the murder. It's the day after the murder. The prosecution's point being... That autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. They did say that he likes to falsify evidence. What did you do? What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object. But there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received the results these this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write to Maya. That is all. I see. Uh, darn you, Edgeworth. I should have known you'd have something up your, up your sleeve, yeah. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham, Edgeworth. This detective's a sham, I'm a sham. Um. <laughs> I really want to um, insult him, but I don't know if I should. Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have had to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Autopsy report updated. So what does it say now? Okay, I can't look at it right now. Hang on a second. Died from a blow by a blunt object may have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Okay, well, I can't wait to blow a hole in that. The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Mm, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Poor innocent girl? Let the witness Miss April May take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent?
witness your name, please. April May, at your service. Oh, God. Fan service, that is. Order, an introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Aw, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in the court. Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred? Um, gee, I was, like, in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Co. Law offices. Mm hmm that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Okay, witness testimony. So let's see, there has to be a, something wrong with her account. It was like 9 at night, I looked out the window, you know. And then, oh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her with the, was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. And then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair... She kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little itty bitty bit. Whatever. I guess. Well, Your Honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. No, it's not. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any- Oh, no. You're not doing that. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright. What about my cross-examination? You can't just skip over it like that. I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Maya Faye's, Mia's Faye's understudy, were you not? Why do they have such similar names? I can't. You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults and perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, I'm doing it. I'll gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. She has to have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. Let's do it. Okay. It was like 9 at night, I looked out the window, you know? Okay. Actually, uh, let's see. It doesn't say the time of death, but... Anyway, continue. You know, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. When attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. The woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. Press this. She dodged. Dodged what? Well, the attack. Please continue your testimony. But that girl, she cut up to her and, and she hit her. Press. How did you know it was my client? Huh? Well, I... Gee. First of all, she had a girl's physique. And, and secondly, she was... She was small. Who else could be but her? She has a point. Hmm. Should I question it? Hmm. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. What? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. You saw nothing, you're lying. Are you telling the truth? Did you really see the defendant? <laughs> Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what's the meaning? Somebody tell me because I'm clueless. About this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. True, she does dress very abnormally. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, 
but still, we don't know if she was dressed like that way the night of the murder. Yes, we do. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Well, are you trying to say? What are you trying to say, me, lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all that, all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl, I promise. Your testimony again, if you would. Your Honor, I almost had her. Okay, let's do this again. I did see everything I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it, I did. That, that clock, um, that statuey clock, the thinker, I think. Well, does the accuracy of my report not startle you, too? <laughs> I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. I saw a hole in her testimony, though. Please begin the cross-examination. Gladly. Let's just cut straight to the chase of what I want to press. A clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something now. A clock, that um, statue clock? The thinker, I think? Murder weapon. It looks like a statue, but it's actually a clock. I think I need to resent this. Objection! Miss May, what you just said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that this statue of the Thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. <laughs> exactly. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock, too. And he was found guilty of murder. Okay, well, we already know that she didn't do it, so... Cool your jets there a little bit, Phoenix. Order, order. Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? <laughs> the witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. No. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. You've caught a murderer. You, you, this is your second case. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Phew, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would be over. What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Was that... Because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. How? So, you've been to the law offices of Faye and Co. No, no! Hey, I didn't say that! Why would I go there? I heard from my hotel room. Tee <laughs> The law offices of Bay and Co. where the murder took place are very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. Hmm. No, she couldn't have. Remember? Uh, Mia removed the clockwork from it. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No. No, Your Honor? I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because she couldn't have heard it. Oh, wait. Uh, I should have chosen the second option. That's my bad. You have proof that she could not? Um, whoops. That's my bad. Listen to me, Mr. Wright. In the courtroom, proof is everything. Without it, you have nothing. You are nothing. 
then I would like to propose a test to see if she really could have heard. The prosecution denies your request. What? On what grounds? This is a trivial matter with no direct bearing on the case at hand. Indeed, objections were sustained. Darn, time to switch directions quick. Ready to proceed, Mr. Wright? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because it couldn't have wrong. Okay. Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang because... Well, it's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. Huh, how could you possibly? Just have a look, as soon as you can. Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It's as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big, fat liar. Fat? <laughs> well, Miss May? Oh, no. Tsk, tsk. <laughs> Quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty, somehow. He knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, you must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. Hmm, <clears throat> that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Yes, I can. I have evidence for that. Oh, <laughs> impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is the conversation that she had with Maya. Take a look at this. Mm -hmm. That's a very cute cell phone. It's not the point. <laughs> you have a girly phone. Wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order, order. The defendant's cell phone? This, this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. My heart goes out to you, Edgeworth. Not. <laughs> Let's hear the conversation. So, you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then? If you could. Ah, uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take out the clockwork. Sorry. September 5th, 927 AM. Your Honor, I think this recording makes it clear that the clockwork was already gone. And this was recorded in the morning before the witness even arrived at her hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? Uh, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. So the witness had seen the clock before. That would make sense. Except it's, well, I would say one of a kind. There's technically two of them in existence, but still, you can't get this at a store. That's my point. Does the defense have any objection, Mr. Wright? Yes, I do. The witness claimed she had seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen it before. Um, yeah, made by Larry Butts. 
It's simple. This clock was never in any store, ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody, right? Because we had the one we already made. I impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's time you went shopping for a better excuse. Oh, burn! <laughs> oh, excuse is not on sale today. <laughs> oh? Oh! <laughs> Oh boy, she snapped. Wait. Oh. What's it to you, Porcupine Head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Oh god. Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. <laughs> Oh? Oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, oh. Silly me. <laughs> did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. Hehe. <laughs> scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Hmm. Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because you held it, you had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it then. Show me the evidence proving that the witness heard the murder weapon was a clock. And that would be the wiretap we found in her room that she didn't know that we pilfered. Have a look at this. Oh, that? <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May? You were taping you were tapping the victim, Miss Mia Fay's phone, were you not? Ooh. Oh. Your honor, this is irrelevant. Not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me to think that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous! Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which is not, you still have one thing, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? I love how dramatic this is. Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is the phone conversation. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again? What is it this time? It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. Miss April May. You used the wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Objection! Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Your Honor, look at the witness's face. Does she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. <sighs> Well, she's barely holding herself together. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap her phone? Miss May. Shut up, all of you. What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer. It's no fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. 
Oh, so I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh. Oh, God. Crocodile tears. Please stop. That did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. You did it, didn't you? Why the wiretap? I'm going to say why the wiretap because, um... You did it, didn't you? Is not a correct statement. Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't tippity tapping er, irrelevant? <laughs> She's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. While this court does not condone the defense's tone of speech, he has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? <laughs> I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that, and of course I can and will. You can't be serious, no way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so the killing happened at around nine at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Ice coffee, I believe it was. Ice coffee, you know, like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts, and then you have regular cold coffee. Yes, we all know what ice coffee is. What's your point? Ice coffee? But we saw champagne in her room. Hmm. Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, we know that, of course. But they don't. So, where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Fey, commit murder. No, they're going to let they're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Um I guess Do we want to continue examining Miss May or call the bellboy as a witness? I think the defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious there, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. What? Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. Therefore, you must accept the verdict of guilty for Miss Maya Fay. Whoa. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Accept the condition, because we can't give up. Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. And we'll see how effective his trap is in the next episode. If you guys enjoyed it, Give this video a like. Also, be sure to like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter as well as support my Patreon. And check out my reaction channel. All these links will be in the description below. And subscribe for more. If you are subscribed or a subscriber right now, be sure to hit that bell icon so you get notified when I upload videos. This is Viola Rolls, signing off. Talk to you later.